Main gates have dropped, and it's like a flying star for the two-stroke. And it's a massive hole shot for this 500cc two-stroke. This bike right here is the most advanced CR500 in the history of motocross. When I tell you exactly what it is and list off the specs and features, you will not believe what I'm telling you. And in this video, we are going to be on board for the ride as this machine goes racing against a full field of modern four strokes, piloted by some of the most accomplished names in the sport. This is going to be a fun one. So what are we actually looking at here? This is the brand new Thomasin T500 two-stroke. It's a machine designed and developed in Italy by Enrico Thomasin. And they say that this thing is the ultimate plug and play 500cc conversion kit for the Honda CRF. Yes, you heard me right. I said CRF. This kit turns your four stroke into a two stroke. After three years of research and development, Enrico and his team have created an engine kit that marries technology with simplicity and is designed specifically for the Honda CRF 450s from 2021 through to 2024. It really is a crazy concept, but in their own words, Thomasin wanted to break the rules. Electronics were fundamental in the design for the T500. So the conversion kit makes use of the full stock Honda fuel injection system and only replaces the ECU. Honestly, the list of features on the T500 is pretty remarkable. So listen up here because this is the bit where I said you wouldn't believe me. Obviously, as I mentioned, the bike is fuel injected, but it also features an electric start, five power maps that can be customized, launch control, traction control, a quick shifter, and a self-adjusting electric water pump. After hearing that, there's surely no arguing that this is the most advanced 500cc Honda the world has ever seen, right? If you stick around until the end of the video, I'll fill you in on the prices and all the different versions of the kit that you can actually buy. But before that, I think it's time to go racing. We are here at the awesome Transbagaro race near Turin in northern Italy. This is a race that attracts some legendary names from motocross history. And the track is just a few hours away from the Thomasin HQ. So it makes sense that they'd send up a bike to this event. Okay, so we're at the Transbagaro race here in northern Italy. And there's some very cool bikes around, some very cool riders, but we've stumbled across this. This is the Thomasin T500, I believe it is. Basically, it's a 500cc two-stroke in a 450 CRF 450 frame chassis. When you read the list of what the T500 is, the spec, it sounds too good to be true, but it's not. It's here at the Trans Bagaro. It's being raced today, so we're going to try and keep an eye on this. We'll see it on track and see it in action and see if it is as good as the spec sheet makes you believe. I think it will be. Bader Mane will be the man behind the bars of the T500 today. Bader is an American racer who moved over to Italy to race the GPs in the 90s, and he still lives here to this day. Amongst his other achievements, he's a three-time Italian Supercross champion, although he's not raced seriously in a long time. So the big T500 might be a handful for him to tame today. Not only does Bader have to learn how to ride the big 500, but he's gonna to have to go bar to bar with some giants of the sport. Namely, the 2001 125cc world champion, Jamie Dobb, and the six-time AMA champ, Jeff Stanton. What an event for the T500 to show us what it's capable of. So you know we love our big boards on our channel, and this might be one of the coolest big board two-strokes anywhere in the world. And this is the man who's just raced it and ridden it and just tell us how you came to ride this bike here this weekend, because it's not a two-stroke event, it's a modern, yeah, yeah. modern four-stroke yeah, seller. This track is not really a two-stroke track either. You know, it's all flat with like little choppers and just flat corners. So, you know, four-stroke would be actually better. 
but this thing it, it gets in there tight you know it gets in it, it gets its job done it's like bum, 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 bum. but when you give it gas on the track it's just like it, like yeah. especially i would love like a loamy track it would be like really awesome because it's really light throwing around in the corners or thomasine who did the bike uh we were just out riding one day and he goes hey you want to try the 500 i said okay let's give it a try so this was about a month and a half ago i did a few laps it felt pretty cool and then uh I didn't hear him since, and then he calls me. He goes, "Hey, you want to do it at the uh, ride it at the Trans Borgo?" I said, "Sure, let's give it a try." So that's how we ended up here. So the gates have dropped. It looks like a flying start for the two-stroke, and it's a massive hole shot for this 500cc two-stroke. Leading the legends right now is Bader Mane on the Thomasin T500. He's got an AMA champion, he's got a world champion chasing him here on lap number one. As he leads the way on the opening lap of action. We've got a tight right-hander and Bader's missed it, he's missed the turn. He's gone over the berm and he has hit the deck. How quickly can he remount? Because he's falling through the pack quickly now. But with that electric start, he's back up and running fairly quickly, but he's dropped well into the mid pack. Bader is going to have to put in some hard graft here. He wants to fight back inside the top 10. He's looking to make some swift passes while all of the riders are bunched up on lap one. He's going to have to show us what he's made of. He's going to have to show us what that T500 two-stroke is made of. I think this is going to be an entertaining race for us two-stroke fans. Up the inside he goes there, putting the power to the ground. Now dragging the four strokes from the turn. Sneaking up the inside here. Surprising how uh, tight Beta is able to keep it on this big 500cc two strokes. Using those tight lines and sneaking up the inside of those unsuspecting four stroke riders. Beta laying down the power on the downslope of that tabletop. And round the outside of one, two. Can he make the third pass stick? Not quite, the door gets shut in his face. Is shouting for them to get out of the way and it's worked a treat that time. The door was open wide for Bader there to make the move. We've got one turn left of lap number one. And Bader is swiftly moving up through the field. There's another rider, he stalls it, so that's a position gifted to Mr. Mane on the T500. far through the pack can he climb he's not quite inside of the top 10 just yet but he's got a group of riders one two three four riders just ahead of him here he's closing in quickly now on board the 500 cc two stroke once again using those inside lines not exactly using the two stroke lines here on board the t500 but maybe the power is just that grunty that he doesn't really need to do that. It's a whole host of riders, a train of riders within reach now for Bader. It's not the longest race in the world, this one. They are vet riders, remember. So. Bain doesn't have that long to fight through the field. Listen to that, just on the gas down that back straight. Around the back end of the start. Grid now. He's desperately looking to make a pass. He's in a group of riders now. Turns the outside on the gas. It's going to be an all out drag race down the penultimate straight. Bain makes the pass stick. A nice move there. Riders ahead of him as they cross the line. He can strike here up the inside. 
on the gas out the turn makes the pass stick and another nice pass. Up the inside it goes again, once again, using the tight lines, just showing how nimble this machine is. Once again, Bader finds himself in a position ready to pounce. He's got three riders ahead of him again. On the gas, up, up over the tabletop. Lands it perfectly on the gas, he's gonna outbreak the Number 15, Honda into the turn, another pass made. Sneak around the inside once again, there he goes. Just tickling the gas, just tickling the throttle on that big 500cc two-stroke seems to do the trick. Made a pass there, just tickling the gas, tickling the throttle, whilst the four-stroke was fully tapped. Look how quickly he's reeling in these riders now. He's well inside the top ten, but how high can he climb? How far up the field? Can he get after that first lap mishap? Here he comes, one, two, three riders into the turn. Oh, and he goes down, so Bader gifted another position. Well within the top 10. How high can he climb? Currently sat in seventh position. Up the inside he goes, trying to take over sixth place. Can't make it happen there. Switching up his lines now is Beta Mane. Looks like he's gonna to go to the outside here. Sweeps around the outside, can he make the pass? No, not this time. The door is shut in his face. But he is all over this rider now. Desperately trying to make the pass. Bader's fully on the gas. Looks like he's going to go for a move up the inside here. Makes a block pass, grabs the position, doesn't look back. Meanwhile, at the front, Jeff Stanton has just been passed by Fabrizio Dini. So Stanton sits in second now. Jamie Dobb is in third. Beda Mane, he's in sixth position still. Just a couple of laps left to go. Can he climb any higher? There's maybe one rider within his grasp, within his reach. As the race draws to a close, we've got one lap left. Just one lap to go for Beda Mane. Can he climb into the top five? Last lap board is out. It's time to find out. Sixth, and Federico Brondi is in fifth position on the number 14 KTM. Bader has made the move on the back marker so the track is clear between him and Brondi there in fifth position and he is closing and he is closing in quickly. a few more back markers to contend with but he is closing in it's getting tight now makes light work of that back marker there on the Yamaha again looks like there might be another one to deal with just now as there's just under half a lap to go will he have enough time to catch Brondi and make a pass Look 
look at that. He is as close as ever now. He is within striking distance almost. Just a handful of corners left to go. Is there anything Bader Mane can do? Can he climb into fifth position? He's in striking distance for sure now. Can he pull the trigger? Can he make a pass happen? There's two corners left to go. We're on the penultimate straight now. Is there anything Bader can do? It doesn't look like it, not this time. Made of Manny is going to have to settle for sixth position. Tell us about that race just gone. How was it to ride in a race situation? Pretty big hole shot you pulled there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, I got out of the gate good, pretty much a, a little bit, pretty much even with everybody. When I hit the third and fourth, I just like, whoa, it just like pulled out. And then I was out wide and uh, I had like a perfect shot going into the first corner, so I just threw it in there. They were saying, you know, I was pretty far out front, but I'd like to take a look and see, but uh, it felt good. I'm used to starting anyways good. <laughs> That's the first corner, it has like loam on the outside, and I just clicked up a gear, and it just, just wheelied down the whole straightaway, and it felt so good, so. But then I forgot the third corner. It was so tight, because, um, you know, we had like 15 minutes of practice. Did you go over the top? Yeah, because I, because it kind of comes backwards. So, like, you go in, and it comes backwards. I didn't, I didn't, remember it was so tight so I just like oh I didn't have time and I let off and I just plowed myself into the to the corner and fell down so I just lifted the bike up and I said let's try to go you know best I can to pick off you know go up towards the front as much as possible and it was fun actually I rode a 125 I had more arm pump than riding this thing so it was just a matter of you know not never racing really I haven't been on the bike for you know a couple months so but it was actually I think if I was you know, in riding shape, at least if I rode it a couple of times a week or something, you know, I could have brought myself back up. I mean, you're jumping it at the deep end on a 500 out there, but we love to see it. Uh, I know the people watching will really appreciate seeing this thing out there, and especially coming through the pack like that, you made it entertaining for us. That's cool. That, that was perfect. That's what you said, you know. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad. It, it, was, it was fun. It was really fun. I can go through and uh, we'll have another one. Yeah. <laughs> Ada, thanks for taking us on the ride, and thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. After bustling through the pack to finish in 6th position in Moto1, Bader was keen to stay upright and battle up the front in Moto2. But sometimes racing just doesn't go to plan. Luckily Bader was okay after this crash. But this would be the end of the day for Mr. Manet and the T500. I was so excited when we turned up to the event and found out that they would be racing the T500. I've actually had a call with Enrico Thomas in before and we had planned to go over to the HQ to see the bike. So to see it turn up at Trans Bagaro was an awesome surprise. So if you're interested in one of these kits for yourself, let me just run through the prices and the options. So the kits are currently available to pre-order with a deposit of about 1,500 euros. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a few different options. You can either buy a full finished bike or just the engine kit with or without the gearbox. Prices range from about 8,500 euros for just the kit without the gearbox up to just under 16,000 euros for a full bike in the limited edition 50th anniversary colorway. If you're just buying the engine kit and not the full bike from Thomasin, there's no need for you to make any modifications to your chassis. Here's a list of all of the components that the kit comes with. And if you're not the hottest mechanic in the world, Thomasin offer a package where they will do the conversion for you. And the kit comes with worldwide remote assistance from the team. The T500 really does seem like a pretty cool product. And from what we've seen in this video, she's also quite formidable on the track. I think you guys know that we love our big bore two strokes here on 999 Laser. And I feel like I'm in heaven at the moment with these companies such as Thomasin, BRC and Pantera all working hard to push and develop the big bore game. I think it's truly a really good time to be a two stroke fan. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Max, you've been watching 999 Laser. Until next time, I'll see you at the track. A huge thank you goes to our sponsors for helping us make videos like this one. Use our code 999LASER on the 24MX website for 15% off. And for all your motorcycle lubricants, be sure to check out Pewterline. 
we use Pucelline MX-9 in all of our two-strokes.